sometimes it's not easy to know just exactly uh, when it's time to do something to move on to the next thing or when it's time to stop. I suppose we're in a situation now where people are asking questions about, well, is it is it time now to open up, to begin to get things back to normality, to move on? Maybe that's the phrase, should we move on from this? It's never been any different, I think. And uh, when I look back into the situation of the people in numbers, you can see the same type of challenge. In Numbers chapter 9, we can read there about how the tabernacle has been set up and large part of Exodus was taken, taken in the detail of its construction and what was involved in that. Now that it's been set up and the pattern for worship is being established and the priesthood is being appointed and dedicated, then you read here in Numbers 9 this. On the day the tabernacle was set up, the cloud covered it. But from evening until morning, the cloud over the tabernacle looked like a pillar of fire. This was the regular pattern. At night, the cloud that covered the tabernacle had appeared the appearance of fire. And whenever the cloud lifted from over the sacred tent, the people of Israel would break camp and follow it. And wherever the cloud settled, the people of Israel would set up camp. In this way, they traveled and camped at the Lord's command wherever he told them to go. They remained in their camp as long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle. And if the cloud remained over the tabernacle for a long time, the Israelites stayed and performed their duty to the Lord. Sometimes the cloud would stay over the tabernacle for only a few days. So the people would stay for only a few days as the Lord commanded. And then the Lord, at the Lord's command, they would break camp and move on. You read in verse 22 that, Sometimes it was for two days, a month, or a year. It didn't matter. But as soon as it lifted, they broke camp and moved on. Fascinating. I'm sure you wonder to yourself, and you have all these pictures that we see in some of like the children's Bible and so forth, of a cloud and fire. I'm not really sure what that was in terms of what it looked like. They describe it here as it was, it looked like a pillar of fire. So there was obviously this clear physical manifestation that was obvious to people. It wasn't that difficult for them to figure out in that sense. And I think as we are in this new experience, just like them, it's like in a place that they'd never been before. And this generation has been for over 400 years in Egypt. They've known nothing but the land of Goshen. And in the recent years, they've known nothing but hardship and slavery in many ways. They're now, as it were, in the first flush of freedom, which might just have faded a little as they've now begun to experience life about a year on from the crossing of the Red Sea. And so clearly what's needed now is some good, clear leadership and direction. God himself, by the establishment of the tabernacle, is indicating that he's in the midst of the people and he has already shown his capacity in the plagues, in the Red Sea crossing, and all of these things, he has affirmed and confirmed his capacity to deal with every problem that they will ever face. But where is it all leading to? The people may not have a great picture of the plan, maybe a general idea, vague in some ways, but it would be easy to experience uncertainty and doubt. I mean, can you imagine tucking the children in at night time and their questions and saying, well, what's it going to be tomorrow? And where are we going the next day? And are we, are we really, are we there yet? I can imagine parents sort of trying to put off the, the question and put off answering this and saying, well, we just have to wait. We're not sure. We just have to wait. And then comes this pattern of the cloud and the fire. Notice it's a regular pattern. That's what it says in verse 16. It says, this was the regular pattern that at night the cloud that covered the tabernacle had the appearance of fire. So I think God is making his will known to people. He's saying to them, look, it's not going to be confusing or difficult, but just keep your eye on me. Where it went, they went. I was thinking about this a little because, you know, you just sort of think that you and I get into the car and we drive from here to here or we get in the train or... We used to get in the plane, whether we'll get in it so much in the future is another question, but we used to just imagine we can just come and go as we want. But there's a whole process going on here because when the tabernacle has to be 
taken down. There's a whole, whole community of people that have been set clear patterns of this. So everybody has their task. Everybody has their job. The family has to gather up all their things and move again. It's a real picture of pilgrimage, isn't it? There's no putting down deep roots. As the Bible talks about, there's no abiding city here. We're a moving people. We're a people moving in a direction. Perhaps that is one of the dangers in a prosperous society with comforts. That is, that we settle down. We forget the need to press on, to look ahead. We even forget that the people around us should also be moving on. There's a sense in which we don't see the urgency or the need. And isn't it important during this time, maybe God is saying to us, look, you thought that you had arrived, but I want to remind you that your journey is still moving. And it's important for us to hear these things, I think. God is saying to us, Look, we need to keep moving. Stop putting down your roots in the comfort of Western prosperity. This is not your final home. Your greatest loss today is not the loss of work or the loss of routine, or it's not the loss of prosperity or jobs or whatever that might be. It's not the loss of the liberty to travel the world. Our greatest loss is our relationship with our Heavenly Father. And our society has lost that. And he has placed us as his remnant people in the midst of this society, I think. He wants us to be clearly looking to him as the people looked to the pillar of cloud and fire and to go where he goes and be content to remain where he puts us. I think that there is such encouragement here as well, isn't there? Because there's no question about where do we go, when do we go. Now we know we look to the Lord. We keep our eyes on him. That verse that we started out with yesterday from Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 certainly makes this clear, doesn't it? In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths or he will make your way straight. That's what we need to keep doing. Whether it's a day, a week or whether it's a longer time, he knows and he knows the day will be right to move on from this position to the next position and so forth. And of course, he has the ultimate decisions, hasn't he? The Bible says that the days of our lives are recorded before one of them ever began. And so when he determines that our earthly journey has come to its conclusion, he will call us home not one second before, not one second too late. We can rest in that. So today... As we go out into this day and all that it's, it has and all that it holds for us, my prayer for myself, my prayer for you, is that God will help us to look to him, to trust in him, and not to try to rush his purposes or plans, nor to try to ignore them and settle too deeply in the places where we think we are comfortable and best. Father, do guide us through this day. Do guide us in these hours. Some of us are anxious and we wonder about the future. We wonder about our future security, maybe employment, prosperity. We wonder about, will we ever get back to where we were? Father, we don't think you want us to go back there. We think you're always leading us onward, ever onward into the purposes you have for us. But the one thing we know for sure is that that's a good plan, for your plans are good, pleasing, and perfect. Give us faith, O Lord, to follow you and to rest when we rest and to wait on you in all things. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Saviour. I look forward to seeing you or chatting to you tomorrow and uh, we'll see what God's purposes and plans are in this day and enjoy the blessing he gives us.